praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, in mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, in mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, in mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God, light of the faithful, glory of the humble, blessedness of the just, listen kindly to the prayers of those who call on you, that they who thirst for what you generously promise may always have their fill of your plenty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The word of God continued to spread and grow. After Barnabas and Saul completed their relief mission, they returned to Jerusalem, taking with them John, who is called Mark. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who is called Niger, Lucius, of Cyrene, Manaen, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. So they, sent forth by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia, and from there sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived in Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O God, let all the nations praise you. O God, let all the nations praise you. May God, have, may God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations your salvation. O God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity the nations on the earth you guide. O God, let all the nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O God, let all the nations praise you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me believes not only in me, but also in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me sees the one who sent me. 
I came into the world as light, so that everyone who believes in me might not remain in darkness. But if anyone hears my words and does not observe them, I do not condemn him, for I did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Whoever rejects me and does not accept my words has something to judge him. The word that I spoke, it will condemn him on the last day. Because I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. So what I say, I say as the Father told me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this is another one of those moments during the Easter season we, we hear Jesus speaking about his relationship with the Father. And the crowds just aren't getting it. And when they do start to get it, they start to become enraged because they start realizing what he's saying, and it's radical. And it's very important for us to recognize that Jesus Christ is unique among all other religious figures of world history. Because all of the other religious figures, they, they were someone who said, I am pointing you towards something else. Follow this way and it will lead you here. Jesus Christ is the only one that says, I am the way, but also the truth and the life, which means he's the way and the goal. And no one else said that. And what he's saying here is, I am the perfect messenger of the Father. He even said earlier, the Father and I are one. And in order to believe in Jesus Christ, we can't take him as merely just a nice teacher that had really good things to say. We either have to reject him completely or to accept him totally. There isn't a gray line with Jesus Christ. And Jesus speaks here, saying, if you believe in me, if you see me, then you're actually seeing the one who sent me. Jesus Christ is the perfect icon. Icon is a Greek word that means window. And it is a window, a vessel in a sense, that leads you to something else. And so Jesus is the perfect icon where he is the very window for us to be able to see through his face, to see the very face of God, through his actions, through everything that he did in this world, he becomes a window to help us see the Father. And that's ultimately where our heart wants to be, is in the hands of our Heavenly Father. And so Jesus says, I came into the world as light. I came to save the world, not to condemn it. I came pouring out my very heart, being vulnerable, not coming to smite, but coming as a God of mercy. That everyone who believes in me, everyone who, who, who trusts in me, Jesus, I trust in you, might not remain in darkness. I mean, look at this image right here. Jesus Christ is coming into darkness, and he's the light. And those words, Jesus, I trust in you, are the key to allow the door of our heart to be open and to allow his, his light to come in. Because we have this radical possibility of rejecting the light. Notice that the light is not rejecting us. Do you see how it says here? It says, if anyone hears my words and does not observe them, I do not condemn him. I didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Then he says, whoever rejects me and does not accept my words, does not accept the light, has something to judge him. That word that I spoke, it will condemn him on the last day. And so what we are doing right now, today, 
has eternal consequences. Sometimes we think about the sense of, well, I'll get around to making Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. But I have so many other things to do, and so I'm just going to go through all of that, and then, you know, I'll, I'll grow up later. Sometimes we maybe have this in sort of an adolescent way of thinking. Yeah, I'm going to be more responsible later. Yeah, I'm not going to be partying and carousing and all those different things. Um, when I get older, when, when I have a family, well, then I'll kind of tone down a little more. But right now, I'm just going to sow my wild oats. I'm going to live my life, and then I'll just get around to being responsible later. Sometimes this is that sort of adolescent way of thinking, where even in the midst of, of college, sometimes it's sort of the party time, and then once we get out of that, then we sort of, you know, live a little more mature life. But what the Lord is saying here is, the very things that you're doing now, are determining your final statement to God. And it's not God who will condemn you, but it is, in a sense, the very book that you're writing right now. Every single day, you have a chapter, and it's saying something. And at the very end of life, you're going to give that book to the Lord, and it's going to be read, and that will be either your defense or your ac accusation. This is something that comes in C.S. Lewis's book, Until We Have Faces. There's a very beautiful scene in which one of the main characters, who's coming up with all these different excuses, all these different excuses of why she shouldn't follow the Lord, and at the very end, she has this book opened, and it's written in her own handwriting, but it is accusing her and showing her that all of these excuses were things that she, in a sense, was sealing her own condemnation. Ultimately, she comes back to the light, and so there is this mercy. That's the beautiful thing about that book, is that book can be wiped clean by the blood of Jesus Christ, so that no matter what's in there, if we leave it alone and say, I'm just going to keep writing my story the way that I want, on my own terms, and I'll get around to following the Lord later, well then the more that we write that, the more it will be difficult to change that story. But if we start now, and if we start saying, Lord, I know that I have chapters in my life. I know that I have parts of my story in which I'm not writing towards you. I'm writing away from you. Jesus, come now. I'm sorry. I repent of this chapter in which I didn't follow you. Because I know that your blood is so great that it can wipe that away, or in fact, not even just wipe it away, but transform that chapter to be a chapter that points towards the Lord. God can even take our failings, can even take the chapters of our past, and bring about an even greater good that will propel us even further to have the book of our life be opened and it ultimately say, Jesus Christ is Lord. So, what book is being written right now by your handwriting? It's something to think about today. And now we offer our needs to the Father who always hears us. For the church, may God bring unity where it is needed, and build bridges where there is division. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all elected leaders and their advisors, may the wisdom and peace of Christ inspire them in legislating and leading their people justly. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in mind, body, or spirit, may Christ the healer touch them through the hands and presence of a friend today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this local faith community, may God grant courage for its members to proclaim the word of God with love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they be welcomed into eternal life. Pray especially for the repose of the soul of Carol Nagel or Danielle Hensley, for whom I've been asked to offer this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all the intentions within Our Lady's intercessory box. We pray for all of your intentions that are within each of your hearts. We pray for healing and protection in our world and in our local community from the coronavirus. For healing for all those who are afflicted at this time. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Father, you sent us the words of eternal life in your Son. Hear now our prayers, which we ask in his holy name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead. Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, singing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Song to Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Leni Son Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus, Qui Venit in Nomine Domini, Hosanna in Excelsis.
you, holy, O Lord, fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Oh, 
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and have appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia. Now we pray the act of spiritual communion. Just allow the Lord to be the light in your heart, to give over to him selfishness that we still cling to, those areas in which we are writing that story, but without him. Let's allow the light to come into the heart so that as our story is being written, we might have the light to see how it is called to be written. Jesus, I truly believe that you are present in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Never let me be parted from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I love this prayer of the faithful today. I don't know if you caught this where it said, for the sick in mind, body, or spirit. May Christ the healer touch them through the hands and presence of a friend today. But I would encourage you to do it, and I'm sure that some of you are already doing this, but there's that question, that sense of like, what can I do now? How can I help someone? And in this sort of situation of, of him, 
academic difficult one because of that that difficulty of not being able to be in the presence of others because of the contagious aspect. But one of the most important things that you can do now is to make sure that you're calling people. And not just one time, but try to think about who's someone on your heart right now. Someone that maybe is alone, maybe is someone that you're connected to and maybe know that they're maybe going through a difficult moment or maybe you're not sure. Maybe there's more of maybe a hidden difficulty that they're going through. Um, but there's someone on your heart right now. Maybe two, three, however many. But really make an effort to stay connected to, to those people, to those families. And not just a, a one-time thing, saying, okay, good, you're okay, and then move on. But try to develop something where you could maybe reach out once a week. And just, you know, maybe this person on this day, this person on this day, maybe it only takes five, ten minutes of your time. But that can make a huge difference in someone's life. And what that does is that keeps us connected and allows us to experience Christ through the ministry of one another. So maybe just to reach out on a regular basis, think about who's going to be your prayer buddy, who's going to be someone that you can think about in the midst of the church or community that you can sort of adopt as a prayer buddy, as a prayer buddy and say, I'm going to make a commitment to just calling once a week just saying, hey, how are you doing? Do you need any prayer right now? Do you want me to just say a prayer with you? You know, and you can say one kind of spontaneously, or if you're not comfortable with that, just say, hey, maybe we could pray in our Father together. Maybe we could pray in Hail Mary together. But do you see how if we do that more regularly, then this feeling of isolation doesn't feel as isolating because we allow that communion to be able to be fostered um, each and every week. So I challenge you to do that. I would love um, if any of you maybe are already doing that or maybe as you're going through this new adventure of calling different people, maybe reach out to me and just kind of celebrate and just say, hey, um, you know, I reached out to this person here. We're, 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 we're beginning that, that prayer buddy relationship and it's really bringing peace or whatever, you know, if there's any you know, special moments there, Feel free to just reach out to me by an email or something like that. Um, and let's just stay connected. Let's keep praying for one another and making sure that no one is alone in this struggle right now. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go announce. Go and go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Regina Cheri, Alleluia.